I'm John Phillips, and this is Next Generation Today. Joining me on set is the host of The Tammy Bruce Show, which you can get online at TammyBruce.com. Tammy Bruce, and sitting right beside her is proud gun owner Stephen Cruiser. Later on in the program, we're going to check in with Michelle Fields, who's in our brand new offices in the nation's mm -hmm. capital. But first, Stephen, there's a drip, drip, dripping sound that I hear from Washington, D.C. I think it's a leak. Could be a leak. Could be reporting. Fox News correspondent James Rosen is the target of a federal investigation for doing his job. No. Okay, for doing his job. And it's gotten so bad. This is topsy-turvy right now. I, I, I've written about this at the P.J. Tatler a little bit since last night. The New York Times came out with an op-ed in support of Rosen and Fox News. Washington Post followed suit this morning. So now you have, wrap your heads around this. You have the New York Times and Washington Post defending Fox News in a Fox News reporter, okay? This is a seminal moment for the mainstream media in America. They are already losing relevance in advertising dollars by, you know, just, they're hemorrhaging it. Now they are under direct attack from a president who they have been championing for five straight years. Do you think, we'll go with you first, John. Do you think that like this Alex is Trebek today. That this yeah. is going to stick. You might get punched, by the way, because <laughs> yeah. he's sitting with arms reaching Is this going to stick, or are they going to do what they've done so many times in the past, where they question him for a few days and they go, oh, my God, what are we doing? And then they start to make excuses for themselves and him. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to use a strong word here, but I believe it to be true. Okay. I think President Obama's a liar. <gasps> when he said that he learned about this scandal in the news media and he didn't learn about it from his attorneys or the White House chief of staff, or other people that we now know knew about this weeks before it was made public. I don't believe it's true. And I was driving into work today and I was thinking about the trial of Khalid Sheikh Mohammed mm -hmm. and Attorney General Holder. And when they decided, the administration decided that they were going to move it out of a military trial and move it into a civilian courtroom in New York City, the excuse from the White House was, I learned about it from the news media. I had nothing to do with it. I didn't have any communication with Eric Holder, which is complete BS. For a decision that's that big mm -hmm. and has that much of an impact, he had to be, at a minimum, notified that that's what the Justice Department was going to do. This is a lie that they use to try to pull the covers over something that they know is going to be unpopular, and this is Chicago politics at its worst, and I think it goes straight to him. And there is, there is it reveals the contempt they have for the American people, because people, the other option is, is that Obama is a moron, and his staff knows it, and they, he's not running anything, he's some kind of puppet of some of these other people, and when we do know that with whatever you think of Barack Obama, he's not a dumb guy. This is a man who managed to get himself into the White House after 142 days in the Senate. This is a dynamic that it, you have those two choices. Either he is a liar or his staff has such contempt for him that they, they really don't tell him anything. And if that was the case, there would be no way to keep a real uh, um, uh, kind of a conspiracy going because then you'd really have no real leadership that, that would be going on. I mean, even Rahm Emanuel, if there was some other leadership other than Obama, it would have been him. And he's now in the process of destroying Chicago. So those are our two, our two options with this guy. I think, the, I think the press is finally realizing that they've been used for five years. They're like the uh, other woman in a relationship like that, where you know they think he's going to leave the spouse, they think he's going to or leave. Or a battered woman. Then, then, you know, I said yeah. that in the post I wrote yeah. this morning. It's an abusive relationship. Yeah. They, they finally realized that they could be the next target because they're expendable, yeah. and I don't think any of them have grasped that until yeah. now. Yeah. Tammy. Well, uh, you know, speaking of targeting conservatives, do uh, conservative students now have to uh, worry about the federal government uh, with the extraordinary behavior of the IRS? The fact that it's turning out to be an onion of harassment shouldn't surprise anyone. And there, every day there's a new layer to the, the notions and the, the stories of what's going on out there. A new layer of tyranny is unfolding. Now we're learning that the IRS is demanding information from conservative groups about their college interns. Now, does the federal government now have conservative students in their crosshairs? We know when it came to some of these conservative groups, they were even being asked about the content of their prayers. 
uh, you know, this is another uh, dynamic. It's not just to busy people up. But maybe this is a, a method of trying to get conservative students who are already under pressure at, at most, the mostly liberal academy to not volunteer at conservative groups. What do you think? Well, the government is supposed to be the referee. They're not supposed to pick a team. They're not supposed to pick sides. And the government systematically in this administration has not only picked a side, but they've been the thugs. They've been the bouncers. They've been the enforcers. And we've seen that literally at every level all the way down to colleges and universities. Yeah. It's pathetic. Yeah, and it, it just really, Stephen, I mean, this is what's fascinating is you don't do tyranny a little bit, like you're never just a little bit pregnant. Either you're tyranny or you're not. And this really is the textbook example of it, what's been going on here. And they've gotten away with the first few years masking that. They've had yeah. a lot of good cover for that, and now it's all just exploding at once. And, and people, I think there are a lot of people who just five months ago were on board big with this president and this administration are now completely taken aback by everything that's let's going hope on. so let's hope it lasts all right well let's go ahead and shift gears right now to the epicenter of all of this the nation's capital and speak to michelle fields who's been covering all of this up close and personal and michelle right now the top story where you are is lois lerner of the irs who was testifying before congress and gave a, a lengthy speech before she said that she was going to assert her fifth amendment privilege of self-incrimination <laughs> and not answer any specific questions. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of what happened earlier. Members of this committee have accused me of providing false information when I responded to questions about the IRS processing of applications for tax exemption. I have not done anything wrong. I have not broken any laws. I have not violated any IRS rules or regulations, and I have not provided false information to this or any other congressional committee. So after she gives that speech, she says, bye, not answering any questions. Nice to know you. That's it. That's all we have time for today. Tip your waitresses. Michelle, what are you hearing in Washington, D.C. about this debacle? Well, the big question right now is, did Lois Lerner, uh, did she waive her Fifth Amendment rights? You know, yesterday she said that she was going to plead the Fifth and she wouldn't be talking about the situation or answering any questions at today's hearing. But everyone was very surprised to see that she had testimony. She spoke about it. She said she was innocent. She didn't do anything wrong. So a lot of people are saying such as Congressman Darrell Issa, that if she gave testimony, she's subject to cross-examination. So Congressman Issa is saying that he may force her to come back and answer questions. Well, here's the question then that pops into my mind. If that's the case, why didn't he have an attorney whisper into his ear, tell him that, and say, no, 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 you're not leaving. You're sitting right back down in that chair, and you're going to answer all of our questions. You know, I think that uh, Congressman Issa is probably a little worried about creating this huge mess out of the situation because there are already so many people in this country who think that this is just being blown out of proportion. Unfortunately, a lot of people think that. And I think he was probably scared to create this huge show out of everything and wanted to probably make sure he spoke to someone before he, he made that decision. But I'm not sure. You know, this is some people are arguing uh, that he's slow walking this, as Michelle is suggesting. At the I'm furious about this because we everybody who knows look she 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 tested she got sworn in she is testifying in front of Congress we know that if you take the Fifth Amendment you can't even answer the question about what is your name without waiving that you can answer no you can't answer how are you without waiving your Fifth Amendment they knew she was going to do this this is a major constitutional stand that she's invoking you would have thought that someone would have advised ISA ahead of time there are attorneys on that committee Trey Gowdy finally spoke up and said when they, he was releasing her when everyone was shocked said, you can't she testified and then it's as you said it's like then okay now I'm gone I, I'm not gonna answer any questions in order for any of this to have any legitimacy, they've got to proceed as they would as if one of us was sitting in that chair. If any of us did that, we would be cooling our heels right now in some jail cell. If she, she would have had to have answered questions, if she refused, they then could have held her in contempt of, of, of Congress, which would have been exactly what they would have done to anyone else. You see, it ends up being, when they don't take this seriously, a kangaroo court. 
And that's when nothing else matters, when they don't apply the law to certain people, but they do to others. Well, let's talk about that, because, Michelle, you've been talking to the Tea Party groups that were targeted by the IRS. What are they telling you about what we heard earlier today? Well, I think they're furious that there are no answers. You know, we have so many questions, and of course they have so many questions about why this happened, how did it happen, who was who was the one who was really uh, making it all happen. And no one wants to answer the question. No one has anything to say. Everyone in the IRS suddenly has amnesia. And I think all of these non-answers is just making the situation worse and making people more frustrated. You know, what's really frustrating about it is, is that it's the IRS that's doing this because if you behaved in the same manner during an audit, if you, I don't know, I don't know where I put that, my dog ate my homework, I wasn't sure when that happened, if, you, if, if the shoe were on the other foot, stuff, they, would, yeah, they would tear you apart. They yeah. would make your life a living hell. And I think that gets to the average American in this too. It's like it's these people that are behaving this way. Yeah. All right. Well, speaking of audits, we need to make sure to get Michelle's fast back before the IRS audits her for her last report. <laughs> All right. Well, my fast fact She's is nervous. zero. That's how many conservative speakers will be giving a commencement speech at Ivy League universities this year. Absolutely zero, which isn't very surprising, but... Yeah. Interestingly, that's exactly how many conservatives all Ivy League administrators know, too. Is yeah. Zero. <laughs> exactly. All right, Stephen, you're up. My fast fact is more. They did a study and found out that if you label food healthy, it doesn't really make anybody healthier. Seriously, the government trying to help doesn't really help. I just eat more of it. Healthy. It's just, that's exactly what happens. They found out it's like a license to pig out. People just sit there and go, well, it's healthy, so more of it's good. And then they just, and they just wolf it down that's and they the like quadruple life. their caloric intake. That, that, that is the story of my life. And a lot of it's processed food, too, which yes. is awful. Yeah, yeah. exactly. They and think it, putting the label on it's processed means you could, it's somehow how it's good for you, right? which is, of course, ridiculous. Or if you draw a strawberry on the package. Totally. But it's yes. good for you. Or a little green leaf or something. Well, the yeah. heart-healthy one. The little heart, <laughs> you know, with a happy healthy. face. It doesn't have a lot of cholesterol, well, but it has calories. Dude, when I eat a pint of ice cream, my heart is happy, and I've got a smile face. You commit, so like true. you do to tyranny. You I commit. You, you're not, you don't just eat a little bit of a pint, you eat the you entire eat the, damn and thing. You, and from the beginning, you don't toy That's around right. like, I'm going to have right. a No. Boom. That's right. You haagen or Ben and Jerry partisan? Uh, uh, haagen yeah, Now, Ben and Jerry's is a little bit too complicated and, of course, a little bit too liberal. <laughs> However, their new flavor, I've got their new flavor for them. Yeah. Impeach mint. There we go. You know, I, I gave them a, a tip on one of them, but they didn't take it up. This was during the last campaign. Yeah. Todd Aiken's legitimate grape. <laughs> I thought that would have been a great flavor. Oh, boy. That hurt my sore rib. Well, Johnny. <laughs> All right, you're up, Tammy. All right, well, my fast fact is uh, five, and that is the number of uh, conspirators we believe are involved in Benghazi. We've, we've, the FBI says they've identified the suspects, and yet we can't go get them because we don't have enough evidence that would fit into a civilian trial. There you go, five. We know who they are. I'm, they're eating a smoothie or some haagen somewhere. We can't go get them. I don't even have an audible response. I'm just no. shaking my head. Uh, we're screaming in our we're screaming in our heads. Gosh, yeah. if only they weren't doing civilian trials. Yeah, gee, well, hmm. Hmm, I wonder what could happen. All right. Speaking of civilian trials, my fast fact is two hundred and seventy-eight thousand dollars. That's how much the Fort Hood shooter made while he's been oh. sitting in the clink after shooting up our men and women in uniform. Fort Hood, Texas. Who, where, where did the looking glass? Haven't we gone through the looking glass? Did you break it when we're we went through it? We're through another looking glass. We're, we're, we're through I the looking glasses because if that doesn't make you want to punch something, you don't deserve to have hands. Well, okay? This, yeah. <laughs> Let me just say, a lot more sympathy for the French Revolution. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> oh, please write about it later, please. All right. Well, that'll do it for today. You can go ahead and make your comments in the comment section below, or you can follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash nextgentv. For Tammy Bruce, Stephen Cruiser, Michelle Fields in Washington, D.C., I'm John Phillips. Thanks for watching.